CSS. So, you have the ability to add some CSS. That's good. We have a bunch of information on the screen. Um, we do eventually need to have the ability to edit the text that's shown. I'm thinking there'll be something like we hover over the, uh, the segment and you'll be able to click it and clicking on it will convert it from text to, you know, something editable. Somehow. That would be kind of interesting, especially if it's over multiple lines, how that's gonna work. something that like pops out rather than having a true inline editing I don't know wasn't there hmm maybe there's a way of doing that but anyway we're we're a little bit away from that I want to do a little bit a little bit more styling here of, of this so uh, let's see we want to do a couple things we are gonna also Change this so we're not showing the raw ISO 8601 uh, duration values. We should convert those at some point. Um, yeah, at some point. Let's, um, let's create like a Do I want to create a, like a utils file or do I want to come up with a name for a function for converting these? I don't think there is any kind of baked in way in like JavaScript in the browser to convert these values. So we'll need to make a function. And of course the hardest thing is naming things. Um, Something like format ISO duration might be good. We don't need to make a component to wrap these because they're not gonna have any kind of special interaction or any kind of additional styling, I think, uh, for these themselves. We'll, we'll do some, you know, some CSS and markup and stuff in, in this component, but just to convert uh, this encoded value into something that's human readable, we'll do like format uh, ISO duration dot TS, not TSX, uh, because we're not gonna have any uh, TS, uh, TSX, JSX markup in this. Uh, and we're just gonna, you know, export uh, default. Yep, that one. So, Copilot suggests something here that's wrong. Suggests something else that's wrong. It's all wrong. <laughs> that's not. That's not how that works. Uh, let's see. So we do, so duration is a string and we do want to return a string. That's all true. Um, so to actually do this though, we need to, let's see. So first of all, I'm gonna say, this is not gonna be completely right. That is, there are probably if you look at the ISO 8601 standard, which I have, I have a copy of behind me, I'm not gonna pull out right now. But if you were to look at that, um, there are probably a lot of different things that are supported, but we know that this is gonna be something where it's gonna start with a P, it's going to have some values, uh, and then it's gonna have a T and some other values, and that, that's how that's gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something like um, 
We could use a regex. Could we use a regex? Uh, call that ISO 8601. <laughs> Duration regex. See what Copilot does with that. Well, that's interesting. So optional year, optional month, optional day, all optional. And then a T, and then a... Oh, I don't have word wrapping on. Alt C? No, I do have word, there's just, it's not quite wrapping, but there we go. So uh, T and then hour, minute, second, but with decimals. I think that, I can believe that's true. And in reality, what we probably want to do is write some unit tests for the function and give it some examples and make sure it's reasonable-ish. And of course, the amount of testing is proportional to how much, it, how important it is that this work right. Uh, so, that is an interesting choice that Copilot has made for us here. Uh, if if there are no if there are no matches, just return the original string. That's kind of odd. Um, I might just have it return a question mark, or it could throw an exception, or lots of possibilities. Um, and then it's going to match all the patterns, and then it's going to construct the parts if they are present. I think this is interesting. It's it's not what I would have necessarily chosen, but it has the benefit of um, I mean it's already assigned. All is assigned a value but never used. Oh, uh, do we have the, do we have an ESLint config ourselves? We do, right? Awesome. So we should have a rule here. I don't know why that's not already a thing. We should have a rule to um, ignore no unused bars when um, it starts with an underscore. Let's have a little bit more space here. Well, this isn't Rust code, so you're already wrong. This again. Let's see, so, uh, copilot, workspace. Uh, how do I disable? No unused bars in ES lens for identifiers. Identifiers that start with underscore question mark. So using that workspace in this will allow it to be able to scan all the files in the project, which may help give it, uh, allow it to give more relevant uh, suggestions. I've never really used Copilot's chat feature all that much. Mostly to like, uh, if I'm feeling lazy, I'll just have it explain what the error is. Sometimes it might actually have a good hint. Sometimes not. Um, there is though, I, 
I do know that there is a certain thing we need to do here to override the settings. I just um, don't remember what that is off the top of my head. Oh, rip stream. Let's try streaming again. All right, maybe I'm back. I think my, my computer is struggling <laughs> with uh, gathering workspace info, apparently. Unstable. Okay, let's stop this. This is not working. All right, maybe we're live. Maybe, maybe. Can I, can I please have stream? <laughs> All right, looks like I'm back. Oh boy. Are we there yet? Bit rate is unstable, apparently. Uh, I'm not dropping frames. Stream, please. feeling that uh, that gathering workspace info I'll rip Nvidia Invec uh, is taking too long to encode that is too bad hmm what is the deal with that Okay, well, the recording is continuing, but the stream is dead. Let's try closing out some things. And uh, let's see. Control Alt Delete. Task Manager. Black screen for a little bit. Let's see if I can fix the stream. Rip. Stream. <laughs> CPU, anti-malware service executable, is 27% of that, VS Code is 26%, have you considered okay, so I think what I'm going to do, stop VS Code, exit, yep, there we go. Uh, let's try starting stream again. Maybe it'll work. Oh boy. Please Twitch. Well, it's not Twitch's fault. It's OBS's fault. Or it's my video card's fault. Or it's... It's all my fault. <laughs> Uh, all right, looks like I'm back. I am back. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So the encoder that I'm using, yeah, glad you never have stream issues, right? The the I'm using the NV NVEC whatever it is encoder, and it should be fine. It should use like uh, my video card, and it's not like I'm, you know, I'm 
on, on this kind of stream, I'm not using my GPU for anything, so, but it seems like, um, like my CPU bogged down on stuff that was going on with, uh, with things. Maybe it's Copilot. I don't know. I don't know, but let's see. Let's see if bringing VS Code up uh, crashes the encoder again. In the meantime, uh, how do I how do I tell ESLint? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, ESLint RC. Uh, change something. Change rules. There you go. Configure rules. It is configurable. This is basically the thing that gives us a warning if we do something we're not supposed to do. Except this is kind of a common practice, at least how I do it. Like we have a list of things from inside of matches, and we want everything except for the first thing. I could. There's never actually. There's another way of doing this. Uh, which I'll, I'll look at in a minute, but I do want to show how to like, yeah, I could, I could use the comments here in line to disable the ESLint rule. Um, but oh yeah, rules. It's just called rules. Yeah, rules. Yeah, 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 like that. It's one of those things that sometimes you just have to know the name of the thing. That's not the rule I'm interested in. But yeah, you just have to know the name of the thing to be able to uh, change it. Like we also need to know the name of the rule. It's called no unused of ours. Uh, we don't want to turn it off. We want some, there we go. Uh, it should be an error, but we ignore variables that start with an underscore or args that start with an underscore. I think that's right. Uh, modules not defined. Well, this is all fine before, so I'm just gonna ignore that. And so now this is not a problem. There we go. So we're no longer getting an error about that. Um, the other way of doing this, if I didn't want to do all that, well, I could just take the first thing off the list by doing something like slice. Right, just this first part here, dot slice. Right, and then that would give me a list that doesn't have the first element. Right, so slice returns a copy of the selection of an array. Right, so this would make a copy though, which at the end of the day, this is like front end code. It's gonna happen not too many times, just a few hundred times when loading the UI. But instead we could do this. And this also works, maybe, I think. <laughs> uh, so back to the task at hand, which was changing what we see over here, right? So now we can take segment start and end and we can pass in, uh, let's see, we can call format ISO duration. Yeah, that. Uh, like so. And then we can do the same thing again, but for end. Now this is, this is all gonna be like incremental, right? We're gonna make incremental progress on this. Um, I guess while we're at it, let's also add, let's add class names for the other things inside of here, right? So we can style them independently and individually. So you're gonna have uh, segment text, segment start, and segment end, and it's giving us a, a warning because those things don't exist yet, which is really great. And another point for doing this versus just having static strings for the class names. And then we can add that down here, right? Segment text, segment start, segment end. Uh, and then we can also add styling. Uh, we could do that here. Yeah, that's fine. So let's, I do want some kind of indication that the, the individual styling is being applied though. So to do that, um, 
let's do something like, we don't need margin here. We don't need margin for any of this uh, yet. I could do something like, um, We just use like a text color change, right? Do something like start is red. And end can be a different color, blue. <laughs> uh, and then this can be magenta. Not that this is actually what we want to do. It's just to kind of illustrate this stuff all working. So if we go over and restart. If I refresh, whoops, if I don't click a different tab, but instead click refresh, uh, there we go. All right, so things happened. So you can see, here's some, here's some text for the, the first segment. And then we have the start time was 300 seconds. And we have the end time, which was 338 seconds, 880 milliseconds. Now that is probably not what I want. And you're gonna see also that it failed to parse here because there were too many digits. So there, there's some room for improvement here. There's not really, um, let's see, D. There's not really a limit on how many decimal points there are. So we could really do something like plus instead of a number here. There we go. Ooh, a wild cadabra appears in chat. <laughs> All right. So if you're looking at this and you're like, what, what does this even do? Well, you're not alone. Regular expressions or regexes are uh, difficult. Um, there are some really handy like websites, like uh, regex 101 and stuff like that, where you can copy a regular expression and paste it, and it will like explain it, and it will let you put in test values and try it out. Um, and the reason things like that exist is because it's a very compact, very complicated thing. <laughs> But it's, it's basically pattern matching. Um, you can put in, you can take a, a, like a string, so a sequence of characters, right? So like uh, PT488.1777 whatever S. You put that in and you can match, oh, well, here's a part that has a PT, here's numbers, yada, yada, yada. So, and that's what we're doing here. But there's some problems. And I think one thing is um, we probably don't actually want this function. We want two functions. So we, we kind of blurred two things into one. What we probably want is something that can parse this pattern and turn it into a duration. And then we want uh, something that can take a duration and turn it into something that is human readable. And we have not done either of those things. <laughs> so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this. We're not gonna have a default function. We're gonna have a um, like a parse. Uh, yeah, there we go. We're gonna call it that. We're gonna rename the file. 
to uh, something like maybe just ISO duration. So it's about ISO durations, this file. Uh, skip changes. Hey, Martinator. Welcome in. Welcome in. Cool emote. Like it. Uh, thank you for lurking. You are gaming on the side. This is reasonable. I, did, I have done and continue to do so much lurking and gaming on the side. The problem is now so many play, uh, so many channels like Foxy's that I want to watch. I get so involved in uh, chatting and whatnot that uh, I can't even have my attention split. But that's all right. It's all good. Uh, so this is going to be parse iso duration. It's going to return a number, actually. Uh, so we're going to return if we if we don't match, we're just going to return zero. And then otherwise, well, we're not going to do any of this. This sort of works, but not really does the thing that we want anyway, right? Because this basically says, oh, if we found seconds, just go ahead and say seconds or s. Uh, and that's not much better than the raw duration format anyway. What we really want to do is have it say, oh, there were, you know, if there was 300 seconds, how many minutes was that? And say that. Which this wasn't doing, but we're gonna make a separate function to do that. So we're, let's see what Copilot does here. Okay, so this is Copilot's attempt at turning, <laughs> turning this into a number. Now, what's interesting here is this is the wrong number, right? So this is turning it into milliseconds. And that's not wrong in general, but I said that I was gonna turn this into seconds. Of course, I have not said anywhere in the code that we were gonna return seconds. I just said it was a number. Uh, but we could write documentation. So into seconds. Yep. Okay, that, that's that's enough, the pilot. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then, if I remove this bit of code, I think Copilot will uh, write this for me. Okay, that's a choice. Now, is this the number of seconds in a year? But what about leap seconds? <laughs> anyway, it's not gonna be perfect, but I will believe this, or I could, I could do this the hard way. So it's interesting, yeah, you see these numbers match up, right? But this should be like, uh, what? 60, 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 hours times 365 days. But what about leap years? Uh, th there's all sorts of way these sort of ways sort of these sorts of things break down at, at a large scale uh, over time. But this is fine for now. And then we need a separate function that we're going to export. Uh, yep, something like that, except it's just going to be format duration. We're not going to convert back to ISO 8601. All we want to do is uh, have a nice formatted, like if it's this number of seconds, it's actually this number of days, this number of hours, this number of minutes, and this number of seconds where you're prefer preferencing expressing things in the biggest units possible. Now, does this do this? I think it does. Um, because what we're doing is we're dividing days. Okay. So this is, I think, also good. So we're, we're saying we're dividing seconds by number of seconds in a day. And math that floor takes returns the greatest integer less than or equal to the numeric argument. So it rounds down. 
So we're rounding down to a number of days. So we don't have any fractional parts. And then we subtract that number of days as seconds from seconds. So we are subtracting things down. And this works because if seconds is less than this number, then this will be zero. So this will be zero and we'll be removing zero seconds. So that all looks good. And this just like takes all the parts if they're present and joins them together. So that, good job, Copilot. I think that is not unacceptable. <laughs> all right, and then um, what we wanna do here is I'm gonna make, so right now we're just like evaluating this function content, returning it. Uh, I think we want to actually do the parsing here. So let's um, do this and we'll return this and put curly brace over there. And